Okay, moving uh, on, we just talked about constitutional law. We're going to move to um, slide six and talk a little bit about what the legislature does. Uh, legislative uh, laws come from a lot of places. Uh, city councils, county commissions, state legislatures. They are called statutes, except for those coming from city councils, which are called ordinances. Uh, statute, statutes address potential social needs and problems. They are written broadly. The courts from the judiciary branch interpret these laws to conform to the immediate situation. So once a law is being evaluated or interpreted by a member of the judiciary, the law is, is then narrowed because they, these laws start out broadly and the judiciary is supposed to interpret it. So they may say, well, this is way too broad. This will allow this to happen and that to happen. And we don't want that. All right, so let's make it narrow enough to apply only to those situations that we feel it should apply to. The federal government has exclusive control over interstate commerce. Commerce is not only about transactions. Commerce, a commercial transaction. I give you money, you give me something in return. Or I give you, um, give you a... 10 pounds of shrimp just just came out of the Gulf. Uh, people used to do that to my late husband who was a doctor. He would treat their family and they would pay him in shrimp. That's a commercial transaction. The shrimp are worth something and my husband's, um, uh, my husband's treatments were worth something. Uh, commerce is not only about transactions that involve the exchange of money, it also applies to conduct, conduct between states and nations. So between Alabama and the United States, between Alabama and Argentina, that sort of thing. These are all kinds of laws. So moving on to executive orders, this is how the executive branch can make law. Uh, executive orders are issued by mayors, govern, governors, and press, I'm sorry, and presidents to promote order and personal policies. These have been, these following things that I'm going to mention to you have been accomplished by executive order. See if you know who did any of these things. Creation of the national parks. Anybody, anybody know that? Okay, go ahead, you guess, you guess. What was that? Right. Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt did that. Okay, good class. All right. Integration of the armed services. Who did that? Yeah, I see a hand way back there. Okay, what, what, who, who did that? Integration of the armed services. Uh, Eisenhower. Eisenhower. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, Desegregation of the public schools. Okay, come on, somebody tell me, yell it out. Right, Lyndon Johnson. He integrated the public schools. Funding and defunding of stem cell research. Anyone? 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 Uh, that is uh, George W. Bush. Um, banning of financial transactions with terrorist countries. That one I'm going to have to look up. Why don't you guys look it up and tell me next time. Um, promotion of order during natural, uh, natural threats, disasters, such as Hurricane Katrina. Um, Hurricane Katrina, that happened to be under George W. Bush. I know that because I remember him flying in the airplane over... Uh, Louisiana and pointing down out of the airplane at all the damage. Okay, I remember that. Uh, then we uh, we had something during uh, 911. That was also President George W. Bush. Slide eight: Executive orders. Again, these are issued without the approval of Congress but can be overridden by Congress with a law that contradicts the actions intended. 
If the president vetoes it, then Congress can override the veto with a two-thirds vote. The Supreme Court can override it by finding the action unconstitutional. For example, the, con the Constitution or the Supreme Court would say that the president has overreached his authority and he cannot do that. Uh, remember, please, that the Congress has the uh, controls of the purse. In other words, the president can say, I want to give a um, trillion dollars to this, and there you go, there's my executive order, I signed it, and now a trillion dollars is going to go to that. No, no, he can't do that. He can't move the money around. He needs the approval of Congress to do that. Now on page 9, slide 9, we have a little bit more about the administrative rules by independent administrative agencies. These agencies are part of the executive branch. They establish rules. Their rules carry the force of law. So when I say the independent agencies make law, well, they make rules, but those rules are enforced like laws and they can enforce them with fines or other approved penalties. To keep the lines of communication open to the public, this is where you have that, um, not an obligation, some people might consider it an obligation, um, but it's a chance, it's an opportunity to talk back to the government. Um, the agencies publish a daily digest every single day of the week proposed and finalized of proposed and finalized administrative regulations this digest is called the federal register and you have access to it online and can make comments about any rule that the agencies are coming up with this is don't forget this this is so important this shows that citizenship does have its privileges the federal register now we go to slide 10, where we talk a little bit more about these ad administrative uh, rules by the independent agencies. Uh, the two agencies most commonly associated with what we're going to be talking about this semester uh, with digital media law are, are these two. The Federal Trade Commission, which is called the FTC. It enforces fair advertising, uh, consumer protection, and antitrust rules. And the Federal Communication Commission, called the FCC, which regulates interstate and international communication coming from the U.S. That means anything coming from the U.S. as a country to going overseas to another country is controlled by the FCC. It's uh, communication uh, also that is interstate um, if I want to have a radio station in Alabama and I want it to project into Georgia and Mississippi, I have to have proper licensing for that. I would go to the FCC if that's what I'm interested in. Slide 11. Uh, back to these um, uh, federal, back to the federal departments as opposed to the um, independent agencies. Uh, these federal de departments make administrative rules, but do not act independently from the executive branch. Remember, they're under the executive branch. Their leaders make up the president's cabinet. The departments most closely concerned with digital media law are the Department of Commerce. Uh, it fosters economic development and technological advancement and the Department of Justice supervises federal law enforcement, such as those regarding crimes carried out through the digital media. So if you sell something illegally online, uh, I know at one time um, there was a, a website. Oh, I stopped. <laughs> 